Hey everybody, it's Showstar and Crystal here for another review of The Flash. This time it's episode 4 of season 1, Going Rogue. So that's going to start an episode titled Tradition, and that being said, let's get into the villain. And unlike the past three throwaways, it's an exciting villain. Yeah, there's like three different perspectives you can look at it from here. There's our perspective, which, you know, when I first watched this... I was excited because our perspective is quite, quite weird because we watched things out of order. I was excited because I knew how great he would get because I had seen yeah, Legends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then there's the perspective of a comic fan who knows about Captain Cold and would be excited. But even if you haven't, you can just tell that this is such a charismatic villain. Yeah, then there's a third perspective of someone who hasn't seen any DC stuff, but... It's He's still a threatening and interesting villain. Exactly. He's a calculating, charismatic villain. He's one of the most enjoyable villains. He's got villains. personality and he's threatening. Exactly. We finally have an interesting villain. I suppose that makes sense. It's like how the third episode of Arrow sets up Deadshot. So, you know, we've got to set up some recurring characters. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we'll talk about, we'll talk about Snart because obviously, you know, as we saw, he's very calculating. He remind at the very beginning, he reminds me a bit of Clock King, the way he can calc the seconds. Yeah, definitely. But then, you know, we see he's able to just do everything to test things. Like, the way he was able to test Barry just by, you know, shooting at people and realizing that's Barry's quote-unquote weakness. Mm -hmm. So that's why he figured out his plan. That's the thing. He enjoys the fact that he had to change his plan and think on the spot. Yeah, he enjoys it because it was a learning experience. Exactly, which makes me a bit annoyed at a certain other thing that'll happen way later, but that's different. But, you know, and... But speaking of Snart and his cold gun, it does lead to some silly conflict with Cisco because he was the one who made the gun. Yeah. Makes, you know, Barry gets mad because it's like, oh, you didn't trust me. But think about it. They had their suspicions that the guy in the coma could be a speedster. So it's it, a uh, we, what if he wakes up to be a bad speed star? Oh, well, enough about that. We did get a moment at the end where he faces off against Snart, but oh, but we did have a really good scene with Snart and Barry on the train. It was, you know, it's we've had a few good action sequences, but this was one of the best flash action sequences we've so, had so far. It's very tricky to figure out what an action sequence is in The Flash because, you know, if it were Arrow, you'd see lots of people being punched and shot and so on. But with Barry, it's a lot different. It's more like seeing Barry rescue a whole bunch of people at the same time. Yeah. But enough about Snart. He wasn't the only... Well, actually, one last thing about Snart is we have not so much a cliffhanger for the next episode. Before He's got just, a friend. But, yeah, he has a friend who is also someone we'll be seeing more of and looks familiar. But yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't know how much he's in the comics. I don't know if comic fans would be able to recognize him from that scene. But they or did not. foreshadow it because they set up the heat gun earlier in the episode. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But enough about Snart. Then what? He wasn't the only character who was in this episode. Felicity's here, and her outfits are amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Enough about praising Felicity's outfit. Let's just praise Felicity because honestly. Love or hate her, this was a really good episode for Felicity. She had a ro lot of really good moments. Yeah, and she they do a lot of teasing us, especially at the end when they kiss, when not much comes of that. Exactly. It's like we said when we saw Barry in Arrow, is clearly, as they lampshade in the episode, Barry and Felicity are perfect for each other. Yeah, and even yet, Iris knows it. And yet, as we say... Both, as they both say, they want Oliver and they want Iris, and it's just stupid. None of them have, you know, there's no chemistry with Iris and Barry, but there's all the chemistry with Iris and Felicity. Yeah, we have that trivia scene. There's I, all the chemistry shut with up! Iris and Felicity? Barry and Felicity. But, you know, we had the trivia scene and we had yeah, the... Yeah, Iris even says to Barry that she's perfect for him. Iris has this whole speech where she basically tells us how useless she is to the show. She's a useless love interest, and freaking they don't belong together. 
Exactly, but you know, there's so many good Felicity scenes. It's nice to have Felicity where it's just nothing but good scenes, like when we first see her, because you know, it turns out she knew, she already knew about Barry's powers from the first episode. You know, we get some. You know, you just see the joy of Felicity and Barry together having fun. Yeah, yeah, they go and together introducing so well. and introducing Felicity to the team. Well, not introducing because she already knew them and they knew her, but now it's like, okay, welcome to the team, Felicity. And I suppose it's teaching. Cisco and Caitlin that she works with the Arrow, which, you know, I suppose would put suspicion, because when you think about that scene we saw back in Arrow with Cisco, mm. But enough. But, you know, there's also really good scenes, because, you know, like we had last time with Barry feeling guilty, we get that again with another guy dying, and like I said, it's a bit like Salvation with Felicity, and here, Felicity actually gets to make that comparison. Not she didn't make a direct comparison, but she knows what it's like. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's really good. She tries to help Barry through that. Exactly. It's so good to see Felicity use her experience to help Barry, who's new at all this. Mm. But I suppose the only other plot thread, the one plot thread that wasn't interesting is the the whole crap with Eddie and Iris. So annoying. Like I said, we don't care for Eddie, but don't care for Iris, as we just said. Honestly, that plot was forgettable. But, hey, we had a lot of good Felicity scenes. A lot of good snart scene. He's one of the best villains. A lot of people love him. You know, and there's a lot of good action sequences with Barry on the train. It was easily the best of the first four episodes. I'll go as high as 7.5. I was going to give it an 8, so yeah. But a lot of people... That's the thing about season... As we were saying in Arrow, season one of Flash really crosses over a lot. I like it. Like, think, normally, when I look at some of the later seasons, they don't blend in as much, but there's a lot of blending in. That's why in. I love season one. I love that they keep these shows connected. The, it's the same world. It's not, a, exactly, it's not always just, okay, here's our annual crossover. Felicity shows up, sometimes we just have quick cameos or references. We had references in, you know, the last Arrow I episode. I know, it's just, it's good to remember that they're in the same world. Exactly, but it also makes sense from a marketing perspective. Flash is a new show, and they wanted to really make people excited. So, you know, imagine they really wanted to get the people who were watching Arrow to want to watch The Flash, because it's like, look at all these cool connections, don't you want to see it? Or it could be the other way around. Some people start watching Flash, then... They think, oh, I better see what's going on with Arrow and catch up. I know, I saw that with a reaction person who just started to flash, and after the first steps, they were like, no, you know what, I'm going to need to watch the Arrow. And then it's like, well, if you want that, you're going to need a list. <laughs> but enough about me. Like I said, I'm giving it an 8. This is a really good episode. Everyone loves Snart, and you know what? I, whether you love or hate Felicity, she's really good in this episode. There's no denying that. Yeah. But no it, complaints, fish. Enough it's about great. that. What is the next episode called? Plastic. Ah, yes. Well, we'll be seeing more of that next time. We'll get into more interesting stuff. There's a lot of interesting stuff to set up. We're finally, you know, we're finally getting the ball rolling. These first, the first three episodes didn't really set up too much. Just getting you into the pace mm-hmm. of the show. But now we're getting somewhere. But with that being said, I really enjoyed this episode. Soon we will move on to episode five, Plastique. Won't See be it. as good without Felicity. Well, we'll get Fel- if you like Felicity, we'll watch more Arrow. We will. Oh, we will. But enough about that. We will see you next time for more Flash. <laughs>